All right, let's do some chemistry. All right, equilibrium. And I want quiet today, okay? No chit chat, no nothing. No nothing. That's a double negative. Forget that. No anything. So we've talked about physical equilibrium, okay? Going from gas to liquid or liquid to solid. And this time we're gonna be talking about equilibrium of chemicals, okay? This thing's been posted, however, it looks a lot different um, now than it did when, when it's posted. So I'll get the new posting up uh, uh, sometime uh, this afternoon. So we've talked about this, that at equilibrium, things are going as much in one direction as they are in another direction. If, you, if it's physical, it's ice and water going back and forth from solid to liquid in your drink. Um, if it's, you've got a bell jar, liquid water, completely closed system, you've got water molecules jumping out of the water, liquid molecules jumping out, you've got gas molecules jumping back in. Can't see the change, but there's a lot going on. All right. N2O4. is colorless. NO2 is that yucky brown haze that you can see on a nice sunny day early in uh, the morning in Irvine as we look toward Los Angeles. How many of you have ever looked north, or whichever way LA is, and seeing kind of this layer, it doesn't look like it's a big tall layer, it's kind of this rusty looking brown. Okay, well it's this, okay. And this ends up changing. This gets photolyzed and all. But this is a reaction that can occur, okay? So this is colorless and this is yucky. So this, folks, is got some of this in here, okay? There's some NO, N2O, NO2, sorry, in this. And uh, depending on how much there is of this versus this will determine how colorful it is, okay? If there's hardly any of this, then it's a very light, faint color. Um, if, however, there's a lot of it, then you get this. So we're gonna be using the N2O4, NO2 um, relationship a lot here, okay? So, this first one, this is concentration versus time, okay? And if we look at it, so I'm gonna ask this guy in the front, who better not send me an email, asking for more points. So this one right here, if this is concentration, this is time. Which gas, or, or yeah, they're, they're both gases, do we start off with? Which one has no concentration at the beginning? So which one has concentration at the beginning? NO2. NO2. So what we've got is we've got a bulb that we put pure NO2 in it at the beginning. And then at a certain time, I'm not sure how long, okay, we don't know anything about how long it takes, okay? Equilibrium is set up here. This could be a second, this could be a year, okay? We have no knowledge of, of how fast this is happening here. What we see is that we start off with pure NO2 that as it drops in concentration, the N2O4 increases, okay? Look at the next one. In this case, we started with N2O4 and no NO2. Boom, boom. So we're at equilibrium here. This is equilibrium here. And here we start with both. Okay? Both, but guess what? In this reaction, we didn't have enough NO2. All right? We didn't have enough NO2. We had too much NO, uh, sorry, N2O4. We, we had too much of this, so we lose a little bit of this. We make this, and we reach equilibrium. Now, these are different temperatures. Okay, so that's why they don't all end up at the same spot. But this is how it looks. This is equilibrium. You can start with pure one. You can start with both. Uh, you can put in as much as you want and let it equilibrate. Okay, and this is the equilibrium process. Now, let's look at this one right here. Look at the equation. 
Okay? On the left side, the product, or the reactant side, what is the coefficient? One. What is the coefficient for the product side? Okay. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Look at this right here. So I, we started with certain concentrations of both and let it go to equilibrium. Okay. So in this case, we had to make some more NO2 or N2O4, right? Look at starting at time, the concentration increases in N2O4. Everybody understand that? Okay. So as it's increasing, what's happening here? Okay. What's the rate of decrease for this versus that? Do they look like they're the same? No. Why? Because we have two of these. Okay? It takes two of these NO2s to make one of those. So that's why if we start with NO2, pure NO2 and knowing this, this slope is twice as steep as this one. Same thing here. Look at this nice gradual decrease here, this fast in increase here. Same thing here. This is dropping twice as fast because, folks, it takes two. Folks, this is critical that you understand how important that coefficient is. If you don't understand that Chapter 10 is going to be a nightmare for you, okay? So you have this in your notes. This is the general formula. Write it down. I don't care if it's in your notes, write it on your notes. It'll help you remember it. It is products over reactants. What a concept. So it's not products minus reactants, it's products over reactants. So little a, big A, plus little b, big B, is in equilibrium with little c, big C, plus little d, big D. K sub c, the concentration, okay, and this is in moles per liter, is equal to then the concentration of c to the, the exponent is the coefficient. So it's c to the c, d to the d, a to the a, b to the b. And that's a constant. At a certain temperature, folks, it's always the same. Okay? The equilibrium constant is the same. And we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So let me ask you a question. If all the coefficients are 1, and the concentration of A and B is one molar each and the concentrations of C and D are two molars each, what is K sub C? What is it? Four over one, yes, four. Because all you did was just say, okay, this is a two, two here, two there, one there, one there, K sub C is equal to four. How many think that's simple? Good. Good answer. This is just not that important, but basically the dimensions of K sub C are really the change in the number of moles, okay? And the number of moles, folks, is the coefficients, okay? C plus D minus A plus D, products minus reactants. So in that scenario I gave you just a second ago where these were each one, 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 and one, what is delta N? What is delta N? This is getting tough, I know. You got to go 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. What is delta N? Yeah. Okay. So in that case, this is dimensionless, okay? 
But let's say that the C's had been, that had been a 2 and this was a, a 3. What's delta N now? 2, 3. 3, yes. This is going to be 5 minus 2 is 3. Folks, you're going to have to understand that delta N. It gets critical in about half an hour. Okay, so. In this case right here, this is how it's set up. If k sub c is much, much greater than 1, okay, what does that mean to you? What does a k sub c of greater than 1 equal mean to you? And I don't mean like it means 80 to you, okay? It's a big number, okay? What does it mean in terms of this? It means either that you got these are bigger than this, these have to be bigger. This whole thing times these two, it's got to be bigger than this. That means the product side is much bigger than the reactant side. Okay? What happens if K sub C is much, much less than one? Then this is bigger than this, right? But what that means is that things are going to lie on one side of these arrows versus the other. If you have a big K sub C, the majority of it is products. If you have a very small K sub C, then it never makes it over here, okay? It just hangs around as, as the reactants, okay? So you'd have products or reactants. That's what this is telling us. Okay, once again, if K sub C is much bigger than one, lies to the right side, okay? Looks like this, okay? If it's much smaller, it looks like this. Okay, and in fact, folks, these can be almost zero. Okay, you can have a reaction that goes so far that there's hardly anything left. Or a reaction that really doesn't even happen. Okay, that the equilibrium is so small that you, you have 99.99% left of this stuff, okay? So think of it in terms of multiple choice questions. I could phrase this very, very diff many different ways, and you'd have to understand the concept, okay, the concept of K sub C being big, K sub C being small. Are we okay so far? Now, there's something called the reaction quotient. Always before, folks, look at that. K sub C is equal to CC, DD, AA, BB at equilibrium. At equilibrium. Okay. So it's, we can only figure out what K sub C is when all of the compounds are at equilibrium. This one, however, is the reaction quotient. Look at this. Same setup. C, 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 D, 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 blah, 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 blah. blah. But initial, okay? So initial concentrations, that means if I say you start with one mole of this and one mole of this and one mole of this and one mole of this, what is the Q sub C? What is the answer? What's the answer? If I say you started with one mole of, of this and one mole of this and you have one mole of this and one mole of this, what is the Q sub C? One, okay? So Q sub C would be one. All right, so this is only going to tell you, this is going to help you decide which way the reaction is going to go. That's the only thing it's good for. Okay, so if Q sub C is much greater than K sub C, then it goes from the right side to the left side, okay? If this is bigger than this, it's got to come back this direction. So if Q sub C is equal to K sub C, equilibrium. Okay, it's at equilibrium, it's right there. Okay, if Q sub C is smaller than K sub C, like here, it needs to make more products, so it's gonna go more to the right. Equilibrium, and if the Q sub C is bigger than K sub C, you gotta go back this direction so that this drops down. So that's like a multiple choice kind of a question, okay? I'm not big on Q sub C, but what is nice, folks, is you can plug in 
those initial concentrations, and then you have an idea as to which direction things are going to go. And sometimes, as I tell you, it's nice to know, have an idea of the range of what your answer should be. Okay? So that's all Q does for you. Just tells you which way are things going to go from the initial concentrations. Okay, this is just a cartoon provided to me by your book. So, this is the reaction quotient. We've already done that. Once again, these folks, Q, these are the initial concentrations. Okay, A, B on the, in the denominator, C, D in the numerator. And you've got those uh, um, coefficients there. So, if this is how we start, Look at this, we started with only A and B. Only A and B in this, right? Could you do that on an exam? If I gave you this and I said, what is the starting concentration of C and D? Could you tell me zero? Does that make sense to you? Okay, these started at zero, it almost doesn't look like a zero, but I'm gonna say it's zero. And these had something, okay? So, if you had none of this, zero of this, okay, doesn't matter how big this is, what is your Q? So Q at zero is probably smaller than K sub C, even if K sub C is small. So if you start with only stuff on the left side, then the reaction has to go this direction. But the Q sub C is going to tell you that, okay? So this is what it is, and from right about here on, is where we're at equilibrium, right about there. And once again, from at equilibrium, Q is equal to K. And that T there just means that at a specific temperature. Okay, we've already done this. Wonderful multiple choice question, folks. Perfect multiple choice question. So this is in your notes. Yes? What is the concentration in terms of like moles? Okay, so concentration so far has been molar, moles per liter. Okay, and that's what those, uh, those brackets are always moles per liter. Okay, we're going to switch in a minute to some gases, but at this point it's all molar. All right, folks. Last night's class couldn't even do this. I was depressed. So, panel here, okay? If this is at equilibrium, okay, at equilibrium, what is K? What is K in this case? What is K? One half, she says. How did she get, how many said one half? Why didn't you say that? You bunch of cowards. Okay, so how many AB? What's the, the concentration here? Might as well be moles per liter. How, what is, how many ABs are there? Two. So that goes into the denominator. No, sorry, that, that goes in the, numer uh, the numerator. Okay, that's the product side. And then over that, then how many, if we're going to see these green ones are the A's, what is the concentration of A? Two. two. What's the concentration of B? Two. So it's going to be two over two times two is four, which is two. Or one half, right? We got two over four is a half. Okay? That then has a K sub C of one half. How about this one? Think three over two? And how about this one? You're wrong on this one. Three over one times one. Okay? And in this case, you got one over 
Three times three, so this is one ninth. Okay, you see how it's done? Very simple. Folks, it doesn't get any easier than this. It's gonna get hard in just a minute, okay? I hope it doesn't, but it did last night. Do, is there everybody can do this? Everybody, I hope. If you can't, go to the notes, look at it, go on Google. Okay, here's another cartoon. At time zero. Okay, I want you to look at this and I'm going to call on somebody in 20 seconds to give me an answer. I think you got it. So a little hint here, folks. Here's the initial time. At time 10 seconds, we've had some red balls turn into white balls, okay? At 10 seconds, from 10 seconds on, does it change anymore? Well, you look at this one. Are there still three or so? No, there's more. So you go, okay, well, we're not at equilibrium here. How about here? One, two, three, four, five balls that are white. How about here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we have six, seven, six, seven, you know, whatever. So at what point would you say we're at equilibrium? Yes. 30 to 40 seconds, you're right, okay? Because look, at 30, we had six white balls. We don't have half balls, okay? Probably if we had these in halves, then this one would have, maybe, maybe this one wouldn't be six, uh, whatever, but you go from six to seven to six to seven to six. So we're at equilibrium right in here, okay? So at about 30 or 40 seconds, we're at equilibrium, okay? What is the case of C? What's case of C? Okay, he's saying six over 14. I think I agree. I think there's 20 balls, okay? And if we're going here at 30, then we got six over 14. That's the case of C. If you go here, it's seven over 13. Doesn't matter, it's the same answer, okay? So case of C then, is equal to 6 over 14 or 7 over 13. Do we understand that? Thank you very much. We got that, folks? Okay. This is how it can look. You can be the equilibrium, okay? You can be the equilibrium, and then all of a sudden, boom, you dump something into the pot. Okay, you dump it into the pot, and look at what happens. This jumps up as a step function, this responds, okay? This decreases until at some point we're at equilibrium, okay? Somewhere out about in here, we're at equilibrium. So you can change things. You can add something or you can take it away. Look at this one. So here we have H2, we have N2, and we're making ammonia, all right? So here we start with no ammonia, and then we end up with products here, okay? Uh, these are molar concentrations. Now what's the difference between this one? This one we start with ammonia, and no H2 or N2, and it does just the opposite, okay? This is equilibrium right about here. Look at how fast certain things change here, folks. Okay, which one, which has got the steepest slope? This one, why do you think that's the case? Because it's N2 plus three H2s goes to NH3, okay? So, you're using more H2s and therefore this slope is steeper here or steeper there. 
And this is just another one showing that, that uh, uh, this is partial pressure now. Okay, look at that, partial pressure. We can use partial pressure or we can use concentration in molar. Okay, those are the two things. One is K sub C, one is K sub P. We'll talk about how to convert those. This is just a picture of equilibrium. Okay, you can either start with pure product, pure these, and this is the equilibrium concentration. Okay, folks, take a deep breath. This seemed so simple to me last night. So, we're going back to the N204 and the NO2, okay? So, these are experimental data, okay? Doesn't matter how good you are in the lab, trying to get absolutely reproducible results is really tough. So, in experiment number one, you started with no NO2 and a bunch of N2O4, okay? This is molar concentration here, okay? Now, equilibrium concentration, this and this. If you, because let's say in the old days we didn't know what we were doing, if you said, okay, I'm gonna put, um, in this case, because you started with N2O4, it would be on the left side, and then you'd have it coming over here to the, uh, the arrow would come to the right side to make the NO2. <clears throat> Products over reactants, if you do that, in this experiment, that value for uh, the equilibrium gives you a 0 0.085, okay? Experiment number two, we actually started, okay? We started this one with some NO2, and we started this one with some N2O4, all right? Comes along here, final concentrations are here, and look at the ratio here, okay? We went from a 0, 0 0.085 to a 0 0.1. Got another one, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.04, 0 0.6, and in this case, we started with only NO2, and this started at zero, and this is what we ended up at. Look at this. Is this, is this the least bit helpful? Those numbers are changing. So when somebody, not me, figured out, oh, if we use that coefficient, guess what? The coefficient with products of a reactant, look at this, that's the same number. Same number, all right? So if you forget that coefficient, folks, you are in big trouble, all right? So with that coefficient like that, it doesn't matter what you start with. Pure one, pure the other, or a mix of them, okay? doesn't matter. You're going to come up with a constant right there. That's why we call it the equilibrium constant. This is true at one temperature. So these are all experiments that were done at the same temperature. So this is the reaction. All right. How many agree that this is how we would determine the K sub C or the K here? Products to the two over N2O4 concentration. How many agree with that? I do. And we picked that off the page before. All right, folks. Let's do this. What is the equilibrium concentration? We start off with one atmosphere. Atmospheres, you do the same way as, as uh, the molar. <coughs> if the K sub C or the K is equal to this. Let me, let me just say, let, let me say that, let's make this one molar, okay? Make it easier for it. Each one starts at one molar, okay? I've given you the K. So the first thing you want to do is to figure out what is the reaction quotient. At least that would be what I would do. So what is Q? 
Okay, do you remember what the equation looked like? It's the con it's, it was N2 or NO2 concentration squared over N2O4 um, concentration. They're each one, right? What is one squared? What's one squared divided by one? So K sub C, or, uh, Q sub C is one. Look at this. So it's much bigger than this. So that means it's got to go this direction, okay? It's got to go more this way. So we got, uh, wait a second, did I say that right? No, it's got to go this direction. Q sub, if Q is bigger than K sub C, it's got to go back in this direction. So we got to make some of this into this. So how do we do that? Anybody got an idea? Nobody. This is going downhill quick. So we already said which direction it's going to go, right? Here's the K. It's much, much greater than that. So we know that it's going to have to go from the right side to the left side. So, this is how you set it up, okay? You've got a one, you start with one, one and one, okay? So what's happening to the NO2 is we're gonna lose some NO2 because our, our Q was way too big. Okay, so it's got to shift back to the left. So we're going to take away some of the NO2. Look at this right here. This is the equation right here. We've got to lose some of this and make more of this. Okay, because we're too big. Okay. Well, you started with one. Okay, you started with one of each. Okay. So if you start with one of each and you have that equation right there, or you just, you don't have that equation. Let's just say you start with one squared over one. Okay, how do you, and that, that value is one, right? How do you make that number smaller? One of two things. You either make the denominator bigger or you make the numerator smaller. Okay, that's the only way you can do it. You can't just arbitrarily say, I'm going to make this one. These are dependent on each other. Okay, and they're dependent. You got two of these back to here. So I did an analogy last night, okay, because the class, like I said, it was a horrible class. They did not understand this. So I did an analogy that I thought was a silly analogy, and, but it helped about half the class, okay? So how many would agree with me, and you better agree with me, that a sandwich has two slices of bread. In my world, folks, two slices of bread. At least for the next half hour. Two pieces of bread and a sandwich. Okay? Do we get that? So if, folks, I tell you that we start with 10 sandwiches and 20 pieces of bread. 10 sandwiches and 20 pieces of bread. What is Q? It's going to be 20 squared over 10, which I think is 40. Is that right? It, who doesn't get that? Raise your hand, please. So everybody in this classroom understands that, that Q is equal to 40. Raise your hand if you don't get it, folks. Okay, you don't get it. So, the equation, once again, is going to be K is equal to whatever this is squared over this. And if I say that you've got 20 
of these guys, it's 20 squared over 10, which is 40. Okay? That's the Q. But let's say I say that the K is supposed to be 1, not 40. Think about it. I want you to do this in your head. Tell me, what is the concentration of this at equilibrium? K is equal to 1. 20 and 10. Do it. I'm going to have a drink. And don't piss me off on this, okay, folks? This is, this is stuff you should be able to do in your head. How many don't have a clue as to how to approach it? One person's honest. Two people. Three. Okay. Right here, folks. That is the equation you're going to use. Here's my sandwiches, and or here's my bread, and here's my sandwiches. The coefficient of two goes right there. It's a two of these guys and a one here. So what I'm saying, folks, is I want you to take the number 20 pieces of bread and 10 sandwiches and rearrange that. You either got to make sandwiches or you got to take sandwiches apart. Right? If I have 10 sandwiches, folks, and 20 pieces of bread and I say, son of a gun, I need 22 pieces of bread. How many sandwiches do I have to pull apart? One. one. That's right. Because in my world, one sandwich has two pieces of bread. Yes. So, if I say I demand to have 22 pieces of bread, she can do it. Right? I'll have 22 over here. What am I going to have here? I started with 10. Nine. Yes. That's how it works. You take from one side, move them to the other. Okay? So let's say in that world, folks, in that world now, 9 and 22, what is K? What is K? Look at that. Figure out what K is. If I say that's the equilibrium, equilibrium is 22 and 9. What is K? What is it? 53, 54, okay? So we're moving in the wrong direction. Because I said I wanted a K of 1. Right? So if I have a K of 1, what do I have to do? Do I need to make sandwiches? Right now I've got a K, when I've got 9 of these and 22 of these, I've got a K that's like 50 something. I want 1. How do you make sandwiches or pull sandwiches apart to give me a K of 1 and not 50? Do we go more sandwiches or less sandwiches? More sandwiches, yes. We need to get this bigger. Because right now, it's sitting at 50. So how do we make it bigger? We either make the top bigger, I mean, sorry, smaller. How do we make it smaller? By making this smaller and or that bigger. And since one's dependent on the other, they're gonna go. One gets bigger, one gets smaller, right? Because we started with 10 and 10, and this lady pulled apart one sandwich, we lost one sandwich, and we gained two pieces of bread. So what is the equilibrium concentration for sandwiches with a K of equal to one? You got it, Andy? Yeah. What is it? What is the answer? What's the question? What's the question? Come on, Andy. <laughs> you sleeping over here? Okay. So, what is the concentration of sandwiches if I want a K of 1? So, I need to reduce. No, I need more sandwiches. Yes. Okay. How many sandwiches? Who's going to raise their hand? You. What do you get? I'm scratching my face. You're scratching your face? Well, you should be answering this question. Who's going to answer the question? I don't know the answer. I just made this up.
So what we need, folks, is we need a number here. Let's try 15, no, 16 sandwiches. 16 sandwiches. Okay? Try that. If I have 16 sandwiches, how many pieces of bread do I have? How many pieces of bread do I have if I change a bunch of bread into extra sandwiches? I've got 16 sandwiches, folks. How many pieces of bread is 16? 32. Okay. I started with 40 pieces of bread total. So what is, how many pieces of bread are left? Eight. If I have 16 sandwiches, 16 times 2 is 32. I started with only 40, so I must have 8. So tell me if that works. 8 and 16. What is K? What is it? Is it? Whew! I didn't know that. This guy says it's 1. Is it 1? 4. Oh, God. I got all excited there. What is it? 7.8. I got 1, 4, and 7.8. So this, folks, is 16. 16. This is 8 squared. That's 4. 64 over 16, folks, is 4. Not good enough. Right? What do I need to do? Jessica, if I got K is still too big, what do I have to do? She wants more sandwiches. Okay? Let's try. How about 17 sandwiches? How about 18? 17, no 17, try 17. So this is gonna be a 17 here, and this is gonna be what? Six squared, getting close. Okay, two, okay, we're getting there. You see how this is done, folks? It's, a, it, it's kind of a game. Now, in a, in a minute, I'll show you how to actually do it mathematically. But this is how it works. So who's going to tell me, what is the, how many sandwiches do I have with a K of 1? How many? 17.8. Okay. So let's say 18. 18 sandwiches. So that's 18 in the denominator. And then I left four pieces of bread. Four times four is 16. So 16 over 18 is pretty darn close to one. Did anybody learn anything just now? Oh, gosh. I thought you were smarter than the night class. I don't know. Okay, so. That was just an exercise within an exercise, okay? Okay, listen up. So, if you remember... I said, it, if you've got a K of 4.63 times 10 to the minus 3, and I'm going to change that to, to molar, and you started with 1, how do we end up figuring out what the equilibrium concentrations are? We don't have pieces of bread and sandwiches, but that's exactly how you're going to do it. You're either going to take from this side and make these, or break this into two. Okay? If they all have one, 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 K is equal to one. But I want 0 0.0046. I need a much smaller. So that means this has to get much bigger and this has to get much smaller in order to come up with that. And you know what, folks? There's only so much iteration you can do, okay? You can start with one and go to, you know, point one, whatever you want to do. Um, but there's a, a, a mathematical way to solve this. For some of you, you're going to go, oh, geez, this is so easy. And some of you are going to go, I, I've never seen this before. And, and you're lying to yourself. Okay, so we know that we've got to go back. K is way too big compared to what this is. So we're going to have to come back. We're going to have to make bread into sandwiches. So we're going to solve for X. Okay, so we started with one, okay, and how many, for every sandwich we make, how many pieces of bread do we lose? Do you agree with that? 
You lose two pieces of bread for every sandwich you make. And every two sandwich, every two pieces of bread you make, you gain one sandwich. Coefficients, folks. It's simple, simple, simple. Okay? This, folks, then, we would just set equal to 4.3 times 10 to the minus 3. And we solve for x. Here. Loud. Okay, how did I get the 1 minus 2x? Because I told you I started with 1. Okay, so I started with 1, and I need to then subtract off from that because it's too big. It's in the numerator. i got to reduce this thing and make this bigger. And I know that it takes two sandwiches or two NOs, NO2s, to make one of these. So I started with 1, I take away 2 here, and I add 1 here. The coefficient is always right there of products over reactants. How many can solve this problem if I say that this is equal to 0 0.00463? You can do it? Okay. You want to come up to the board and do it? Nope. Okay. So folks, I think, I think this is eighth grade math. At least in the not so good school system that I went to, eighth grade math. For you folks, you smart people, probably sixth grade math. Oh yeah, sixth grade. Ninth grade, give me a break. Where'd you go to school, buddy? Okay, so this is how you set it up. Okay? Do it, solve it. Yes. You got an answer already? Oh, crap. I mean, go wonderful. So don't, don't say anything yet. You might have just looked at the notes. So once again, folks, this is your basic... I know I did this in maybe seventh grade. I'm going to help you because some of you look a little bit worried. So, expand and set equal to zero. Okay? So, I thought I did a better job than that. Anyway. So, here's the, the one side. Okay? Here's the one side and the other side is the one plus x times, uh, this was the, uh, the k. So do you remember how to do this, folks? 1 minus 2x squared? That's 6th grade. There it is. Oops. See how we do it, folks? What grade did you learn this in? Did you learn it? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't remember when, but he knows how to do it. I don't really care when you learned. Okay. This, folks, is just, to me, like I say, it was third grade math. I don't know. Ooh. Pretty soon I'll learn it in kindergarten. So, how many, I, I broke it down as simple as I could. Do you see how to do this? Now what do we do? Oh my gosh. What now? Look at that. 
Our friend the quadratic. So, how many have ever heard of the quadratic equation? What grade did you hear that in? Ninth? Well, you learned a lot in ninth grade, buddy. Did you learn anything after ninth grade? Probably, yeah, okay. So folks, do the problem. Here's the quadratic. And for those of you who are bored, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I understand that there are several of you in this class who love math and who, who already know the answer to this and all. And, and I'm sorry, but last night's debacle has me worried that I'm not, I don't want to just teach to the, the best and the brightest. How many of you have a button on your calculator that will do this for you? I don't. I believe those, outlaws, those calculators are outlawed on the exam. Okay, well, I'm going to do it for you here. I went on this website and it did it for me. I just typed in A, B, and C, and it's amazing. Now, I'm too old. My calculator doesn't have that button. And I can mess around with that quadratic for about 20 minutes and not get the same answer twice. So, uh, but you guys are screwed if you can't do it, okay? I'm old. You know, very, very few times do I have, do we have to do quadratics in our research, Josette? No, no, no. Okay, so, the website gave me two answers. That's how the quadratic is. So which one of these is the right answer? Which one is the right answer, folks? This is now where you have to think about, okay, what what do I have? What is the equation that we're trying to solve with this? Okay? I knew I'd get it at some point. Come on. There it is. That's the equation. So which of the two values, 0.45 or 0.55, is going to make sense? Which one makes sense, 0.45 or 0.55? How are you going to know which one to use, even if you push that button on your calculator and it gives you two answers? How do I know? How do I know? 0.45 or 0.55? No, no. You've solved for K. We already have the whole thing here, but now look at this right now. Is it possible to have a negative concentration? No. So if I take that number one and I subtract two times x, if x is 0.45, then what does this top part become? It comes up one minus 0.9 is equal to about 0.1. If x is 0.55, X is 0.55, what does this top become? Some stupid number. A negative number. No, it doesn't square root and get positive. Huh? Yeah, you don't square it. No, 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 no. You can't have a negative concentration. 
I, you can make it go away with your math, but there's no physical way to have a negative concentration. You can't have like any matter, you know? So folks, you look at the answers that you get, you get two answers, and you look to see if it makes sense. So in this case, the 0.45 works or the 0.46. Now, everybody try it. The answer I said for X is about 0.46. Plug it into this and see what you get with a 0.46 for a K. That's what you always want to do. You always want to see does your answer make sense and do you get the right answer. What'd you get? What'd you get? 0 0.08 he says. What'd you get? 4.38 times 10 to the minus 3. Pretty close. Okay? How many... No, I'm not going to ask that question. All right, we're done. I'm finished. <laughs>